Hi, welcome back to this week's um, edition episode of Let's Talk Simple Truths. I'm super excited about this week because Dr. Virginia Bradshaw is joining me and I can't wait to introduce you to her and um, and help you hear her story and just see how she makes sense of life and faith. She, like me, has a journey that got her to the Lord and got her really um, to the foot of the cross. And so I'm not going to waste too much more time. I'm just going to go ahead and, and bring in Dr. Virginia. Hi. Hello, lady. Hi there. I feel like I'm echoing a little bit. I'm going to pull my mic away from my speaker. Um, thank you for coming on the show this week. No, I have to say that we, we had such a divine appointment when we met. I believe we were up and, um, at a women's brunch sponsored yes. by one of the local radio shows. Yes. And um, what, was, what was the radio show that sponsored that? I can't remember the radio show, but I just remember I drove a very long way to get there. <laughs> a Me very too. long way. <laughs> so that was like in 2016, I think. And it was it in May. It was like, yeah. Yeah. I'll say just, 2016. Just about then. So um, if you were in Alpharetta for a women's brunch, um, <laughs> And, and literally, like, all the names are leaving me right now. But I know that I met a couple of people there, and you were one of them. I turned around, and there you were. And I think you and I locked eyes, and we just yeah. knew that it was a connection. It was a divine appointment. because, And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, we also took a picture together. We did. Uh -huh. We took a picture together and I was trying to get to the picture today, but I didn't get the opportunity to get that. But I do believe we took a picture together. And that was just the beginning of this relationship, which is awesome. And we were both there. Um, I can't remember who it was. Never been there before. But, yes, I felt that the need that I had to be there that day. I needed to be there that day. Nancy, so, yeah. Lee DeMoss, Nancy Lee DeMoss was the speaker at that um, at that brunch and i remember i purchased yes. her husband's book for my husband because i thought he might really enjoy that that yes. was so fun and and i just have to tell you like if you have if you're listening either live or um in the recording and you have had one of those divine friendship encounters um just just throw a high five or a me too in the comments because I feel like we just need to celebrate those. I don't think, Dr. Virginia, I don't think we pay enough attention to those. I don't either. I, neither do I. And then I remember we came together again at one another event that you had given. And uh, but you're right. We but everything is divinely ordered. It was divinely ordered. That's why you were there, and that's why I was there for such a day and for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Mm -hmm. For such a time as this. And so we have for such a time as this, this week with you here, because um, as I was sharing with you, I, I have such a value for your story because while mine isn't quite as, um, I didn't go quite as far down that road. I feel like we're in a season where a lot of people are finding ways to um, numb their hearts from pain and disappointment and um, even like anger and, and frustrations. And so I love your story because you, um, you know, they say in, in our, you're in my world, um, I got off at a different floor exactly. you know, than a lot of people got off. And you are a native Atlantan. And yes. I just want to take my hat off to you because I know a lot of us Yankees have come down and invaded this town. <laughs> They love Atlanta. <laughs> it's such a nice everybody. So you're it. a native Atlanta, and, and you are um, you are one of five siblings. And right. are you the middle child? I, I am. I'm the middle child and the only girl. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Other hat comes off to you, madam. <laughs> I know, right? I know four brothers, and um, yeah, that was um, that was great growing up, though. That was really great growing up. I can't complain because the brothers um, 
we were very close. So that made the difference. That, you know, that makes all the difference in the world. So you, um, you married very young and um, that, that was not, that marriage didn't last. You, you said about 12, 13 years. Um, and again, our stories connect. Um, my current husband is not my first husband. He's probably the first one I actually feel like I have this amazing Christ-centered marriage in. Um, but you, something happened. Now, I don't know whether it happened during your marriage or after, but but you really went down the, the road of substance abuse. Yes, it happened during the marriage. Um, we got involved. He and I both, and my husband, uh, my ex-husband and, and I both got involved with drugs. And um, oh my Lord, uh, when I tell you that was a rocky road, a long road, uh, for about 10 years for me. Um, and then um, the marriage uh, dissolved in about uh, a year before I was actually delivered from those drugs. So yeah, it was, it was long. <laughs> it was wow. long. Yeah, so, it was long. And I had three kids too, see? So yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty bad. That, that's just like a perfect storm. Um, and I understand that. So how did the Lord meet you in that place? Um, well, I, I have to go back when we first, um, early on in the marriage, I was never uh, a church girl. I say that didn't, I, I didn't grow up in the church. Let me just say that like that, because a lot of people say, well, you're a preacher. You, you didn't grow up. No, I didn't grow up in the church. I, I didn't grow up in the church. I didn't know all the the um the church um i didn't know all the, the the things that go along with the church i just didn't know uh about church i knew god i knew my grandmother prayed i knew that my grandmother went to church i knew that uh, my mom went to church but we just wasn't a family that grew up in the church so um when i got married and uh we began to do those drugs at some point of the marriage I want to say the Lord began to to tug on my heart about trying to get it together, get it, get it right, trying to just trying to just get it right because I was going down a darker, darker, darker road. So I did, um, I did. I started going to church and taking the kids to church and trying to just overcome that. Um, I didn't really see it as an addiction then either. I just saw it as, oh, this might be a little too much for me, but at the same time, never an addiction, but always at the same time, seeing my next hit. Mm -hmm. As long as you can see that next hit, as long as you can see and you're expecting it, you're never gonna be free. And I could always see it. And so when I, as the road continued to go and it get, got darker and darker and darker, um, I came back out of the church and then I went back into church. It was just in and out. But then uh, one day, one day, one day, one day, I was I was uh, looking at television, church. I was looking at a, um, a gospel show on television. And the evangelist, she said, um, she said, if your life is the same way today as it was then, she said, you need Jesus. She said, you just need Jesus. And out of that television, God spoke like his voice. It was through her and the spirit of God just hit me and I went to my knees and um, and I remember just crying, just crying, literally crying. But I knew that I had changed. And she told me, she said, you repeat these words. Well, she wasn't talking to me, but you know, she, she was saying, repeat these words and- Jesus was talking to you. Yes, he was. And, and, and I began to repeat those words and those words I had repeated before. I had went through all of that before, but I never felt that change. I never felt the spirit of God on me like that. And, and I never felt that, God, I, I just, I can't explain it. It was a moment and it was a lifetime of a moment that I've never lost. And so, um, but God delivered me. He set me free. But at that time, remind, let me say this. I had been praying for that. I had been seeking the Lord. I had been, because it had gotten worse. Uh, the, the marriage was over. The children was uh, here. Uh, one of them was here and two of them was there. You know, it was bad. 
it was really bad. So I had been praying because I wanted my family back. I wanted my family. I wanted my family back. And so um, <laughs> I just, I just don't know. It was just, it was just God. God just heard my prayer and he delivered me. Yes. I, you know, I, I am a firm believer that when we have encounters with God, when we have encounters with Jesus, mm -hmm. everything changes. Like he is, you know, the song, he is truly the chain breaker. Like he, yes. he sets us free. And we don't understand that until we experience things like you just described. Um, and my addiction story is very similar. I had a moment where Jesus showed up mm. and invited me into a life without alcohol and everything changed. And so yes. when you say he delivered me, I can't describe it. I get that. Yes. Because there's no words that can describe an encounter with Jesus where everything changes and there's you're no. going this way. And all of a sudden you're going this way. Yes. And there's joy and peace and love and forgiveness like never before. Oh. It's I am, an amazing feeling. Yeah. And it's always an invitation. Yes. It's, it's hey, like, hey, would you like this? You know, that's right. <laughs> it's always yes. an invitation. And do you trust me enough to receive it? You know, and and it's almost like I was at the last of, you know, how how people would say, well, you have to hit your rock bottom. That was that was my rock bottom. And uh, yeah. I had actually lost everything, the job, the marriage, about to lose the children, the self-respect. I had lost the house. I mean, everything, the car, everything, everything was gone. So, yeah. Uh, I am God, putting that in the chat because I just think that's, that's huge because I, I believe everybody's rock bottom is different. Yes, you know, it is. Um, everybody gets to a place where they're at the end of their selves. And that's true. Um, and and then we get mm. this choice, you know, because, yes. because our, our humanness wants to control ourselves, wants to protect ourselves, wants to protect our hearts. For me, my my whole drive was to to numb my heart from the pain. And that's, that's right. Dr. Virginia, that's why I think it is so um perfect that you and I are talking tonight because we're what two months into this self quarantine and people are self medicating That's with right. with so many different things you know it, it could be alcohol it could be drugs it could be food it could be um it, it, it could be television it could even be just exercise because I know exercise can be a numbing thing but I'm telling you if you're listening tonight Jesus is inviting you Yes. To let him, let him be the one that cares for your heart. That That's if we right. can just get to that place where we say, no, th there's nothing wrong with drinking. There's nothing wrong with television. There's nothing wrong with food or exercise. But if it comes before Jesus in our lives, then we have we have idolatry basically we have things backwards that's right idolatry because you begin to worship that thing and you begin to want it more than you want god and that could be anything that could be a television like you say a movie that could be anything and yeah. and i tell you another thing that that the addiction does the addiction you lose all self balance that's why when you come when you when you become clean again or when you get ready to um live that life without the drugs with Without the uh, pills, without the alcohol, you have to find that balance. Because as an addict, as an as an addict, you overdo everything. You take everything to the extreme, and so you know that spills over into your life. You, you, it takes everything. You does you do it all to the extreme. You might. Um, you might eat to the extreme. You might smoke to the extreme. You might, like you say, other things to the extreme. But and you're saying, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay because I'm not doing crack cocaine. I'm okay because I'm not drinking alcohol. I'm okay. No, no, you're not okay. <laughs> no, you're not okay. No, you're not okay. No. You know, it was a journey. I, I love you explaining that. It was a journey for me. Like the first month when I stopped drinking, I, I felt like I had gone to heaven. I mean, but then life started happening again. 
and it got hard. And it was that next six or eight months learning how to go to Jesus when mm. my heart was um, struggling, you know, whether it was we were getting a financial hit or um, I was, you know, struggling with those demons like rejection and, you know, and that stuff. Oh, yes. And that's that's really where the rubber meets the road. That's where if you don't have your faith and your life coming together, right, you're going to throw away your faith and you're going to ruin your life. That's right. Because you don't have anything in order coming from that addiction. You, you have to find that balance, first of all, so that finding that balance, you got to learn now and sit down and examine yourself because now you got a whole different, you got a, a like a void over here now that you mm -hmm. got to fill up. Mm -hmm. You got to fill, you got to fill this void up now, because if you don't fill this void up, the devil is going to come back and he's going to bring shame. He's going to bring rejection. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring defeat. He's going to bring uh, everything that he can think of because that's how he attacks our mind. Mm -hmm. And so now that you come in off of this and the things that you did while you were on it, that's his weapon toward you now, mm -hmm. you know, so now you, you know, and when you go in a room, you'll feel like people watching you, you know, everybody's looking at you and everybody's like, Oh yeah, look at him now. You know, she's, she's not doing that crack. Look at him now. Y'all put your pocketbooks up, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I'm just keep it, keeping it real. And it, because you, the enemy, he's attacking you. Mm -hmm. He's attacking you through now what's normal but wasn't normal for you at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. That addiction, there's nothing normal in that addiction. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. And yet we learn a, a new normal, which is such a catchphrase now of um, letting Jesus fill that void, letting Jesus right. be, you know, and who he says we are. Before we came on the show tonight, I was sharing with you how, um, for a while in the middle of the day, I stepped out of my identity. And, you know, for a couple hours, I was walking around and I was frustrated and I was, and, you know, and I was, I was starting to have that self talk that I used to have, like, I'm so lost, I don't know where I'm going. And I finally, I finally had this thought, well, why don't you ask Jesus what he's saying? Because this is obviously not Jesus talking. And I did. And and immediately he reminded me of um, the the binder. I keep my prophetic words, you know, words that that promises that God has spoken over me. And he said, "Who who are you? Like this is not you. You you are not lost, you know." And I think that, um, especially when we start to get freedom from whatever addiction that we've walked out of, we have to now learn to walk in a new level of surrender, which is not an addiction. It's just a level of surrender. And exactly. it's not like life is gonna be smooth sailing. Yes, you're free, but you still have to learn how to walk in this place where the only one who can help you is help is able to help you, which That's is right. humility. That's right. Because you, you have to learn how to, to let him in. That's the key too. You got to now you got to learn how to let him in. And that's the only way you can do that. And is you have to stay before God. You have to read your Bible. You have to pray. You have to get in a teaching somewhere where somebody's teaching that word. And so that you can get that foundation built under you because see, like we're in a, now we're, we're in a pandemic and we're home. So a lot of us, this is where the devil is working on a lot of people. And when you said earlier about people are medicating themselves, they are because guess what? They don't have to worry about going to work. The enemy is saying, this is your time. You can actually do what you want to do now. You can drink now. You can you go, you can buy you some pills now. You can smoke some weed now. You can do whatever you want to do now because you're home. And, and this is the worst time. Mm -hmm. This is the worst time to do that. Because there is no, and that's just a trick. That's those, that's those uh, fiery dots that he throw at us. Mm -hmm. and we cannot be in a position to catch those fiery dots. That's why just as you were in church and, and in the word, you got to be more in the word now than you've ever been. Because it's easy to go one way um, overbearing this way more than that way. It's easy to get off balance. And that's the way with my life. I have to constantly examine myself, constantly. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and we, we have to, we, that's, that's the faith journey. It's not, oh, did I go to church today? It's, it's right. am I examining myself? Am I taking every thought captive? Am I, am I putting God first before everything? You know, we have a, a saying in my home every day, you're either in the, the logos word or the Rima word, you know, like it's okay to just sit and soak for an hour, that's fine. But you better be in the Rama word or the Logos word. You gotta be in the word there somewhere. You gotta be in that word. That's right. You gotta be in that word. You gotta be in that word because if not, you'll stay there and you'll sit there too long and you'll become idle and you'll become the devil's workshop at that moment. Yeah, yeah. And see, once you start down that road, there it's a dangerous trajectory. It once is. you start thinking, well, I'm I'm not working. I'm not going to the office. I can have that next drink. I can I can smoke that joint. I can take those pills. Like I'm I don't have to go to work. You know, every, the kids are sleeping in. I'm going to sleep in. Once you start going down that road, you open that door, like you said, for the devil just to come in and just play with you. And now yes. you you know you think you're all in control of yourself, and you're not. You're a tool. That's right. You're a puppet for him. Because that trajectory will take you down, um, you know, frustration. You start having expectations. Now there's anger, resentment, you know, and then you have this place that you're walking in that's like just a, a, a landmine. Anything can set you off. And, that's right. you know, you this is not the time to be burning bridges in your relationship. Yeah. This is the time to be building those bridges. That's you right. Know, um, I, I can go on this all night, but I want I wanted to hear from you. So we have touched on some of these things because I had asked you, you know, how you make sense of of faith and life, and you touched on the balance and really having that um, secure foundation. Because um, when, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 I'll finish your thought and then I'll go. Go ahead. I'm well, sorry. I was going to say that's really what I feel like you were talking about is just constantly making sure your foundation is strong and secure. Yes. And I, I, want, I wanted to say that when I first um, when I first um, when, when I was first delivered off drugs and getting into the word of God, I was dogmatic. No balance, period. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so everybody around me, the children, um, everybody, it was a problem because I, I just wanted everybody to come on, let's get in this word. Come on, let's get here. Come on. I had no balance. I had no balance, no balance at all. And so um, I was working for Fulton County uh, government at the time. And one of the things was um, they needed, they, they chose me to be one of their customer service uh, instructors for, uh, because it was mandatory that all employees take that. So they sent us on this training course. Well, when we went on the training course, I know this was a divine order, Annie, because on the on the training course, it was help, it was for me, you know, to show me how to put balance in my life. Now I, I teach balance when I don't even have balance, but it was a great teaching course. And what I learned at that time, now that I had gotten, uh, delivered from drugs, um, stopped smoking cigarettes. And, you know, to be honest with you, I wasn't sleeping with men. I mean, I had stopped. I mean, I was just on that walk at that point. Mm -hmm. But the simple thing was keep your yes and your nose equal. And that's, oh, that's a good word right there. Keep, keep going. Yes I'm going to add that in the nose. comments. Keep your yes and your nose equal. Because what happened is when you come off and when you come off an addiction or when you come off a situation where you have been down a dark road, you come back with the expectation that you're trying to please people, you're trying to help people, you're trying to you go over your way and you go over backwards. And then when you go over backwards, when you go over and help people, you will start expecting things from people. And that's where the disappointment come in. That's where the trickery comes in with Satan. And that's where the back, you know, all the, you know, the, the, the energy for anger, the energy for resentment, now I'm just mad, you know, because you expected something 
You put an expectation there because you were trying to please people, but you're the only one there trying to do that. So you got to say, no, I can't do it. Or yes, I can do it. But you got to keep the yes and the no's at a balance. You cannot have as many yes and less no's and vice versa because it's going to throw your life all the way off balance. Because emotion, we a lot of time we run by emotions and that's what throws us off the balance is the emotions. Yeah. And everybody is driven by emotions. Some people like um, extroverts who are real people, people are driven by the emotion of, I need to go be with people. Right. And introverts are driven by an emotion, you know, that's, that's different. Like I, I just need my space. I just need my time. And then you add in wounds of the heart, which generate a whole bunch of other false emotions because wounds are, are, we're just always protecting them. And instead of letting them out into the air and letting them heal. Yeah. And those em emotions and you, and, we're not going to go down that path tonight, but you and I both know emotions are running way too high in too many areas in our world right now, especially our country, especially our state. That's right. I and agree. we have to, we have to get those things. Um, we have to, we have to get those healed. We have to get those emotions healed because they're, they're going to wreak havoc on everything going forward in our physical bodies, in our relationships, in our decisions. And like you said, everybody in the house gets caught up in what I decide to do, what I choose to do. Everybody gets caught up in that. They do. They do. And that's another thing we have to, that's when I say with that yes and that no. That's that's why I love the scriptures. It says, um, in everything you do, um, get it uh, in all that getting, you get an understanding. So when you can get an understanding, you can be in your truth on why you're doing certain things. So why did you say yes to that and you know you didn't? Why did you say no to that? And you you know, you you can understand self better when you're honest with self. Understand why you said this. Are you saying it to please somebody? Are you saying it to because you feel um, you feel you feeling guilty because you wasn't there the first two years of their life? I mean, why are you here like that? Why are you feeling that way mentally? Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, that balance. Oh my God, that balance threw me all the way off. And so, even as even as in my life, as what I do every every day. I have to keep a balance. And so, and be honest with myself, why am I doing it? Because I can't do it to appease people. Cause that means that emotion that we just talked about, mm -hmm. that's, that's another damaged emotion. So I can't do it for that reason. So let's finish up and talk about that because you mentioned that um, prioritize, prioritizing planning and weekly observation. What does that look like for you in terms of, of your faith and your life and, and how you stay emotionally, well, I think the buzzword now is emotionally intelligent, your EQ. What does that look like for you? It looks, this is what the picture of my life, it hasn't always been this way now because I didn't understand what planning meant. First of all, I had to learn how to plan. I've got was giving me all of these visions and all the ideas and things to do and get in order, but I was just doing them. I was just doing them, but everything has an order by it. So what I had to learn how to do, I had to learn how to sit down and plan this thing and sit there and plan it because it says that, you know, he'll give it to us if we plan it and present it to him, then it'll work out the way it's supposed to work out. So I wasn't giving it to him. I, I know what I was hearing, but so what I do now, I plan everything. I do not uh, like to do things um, haphazardly. So therefore, that I have to keep that discipline in my life. And anybody else that comes in my life, they'll say, well, you know, we can just run and do this. And we can just, no, we can't. <laughs> because a lot of times when you're when you're just haphazardly doing things, that means something over here is lacking. So mm -hmm. I have to prioritize what is important here. Is it is it dealing with the church? Is it dealing with my home? Is it dealing with my personal life, my mother? So now that we're in this pandemic, I know what I do for her on Mondays and Fridays. I know, and I don't put anything else in you know in the place of that. So planning, prioritizing these things, and then at the end of the week, and you know what I do? I sit down. And, and, and I used to, it used to things like this never caught my attention, but I want to know at the end of the week, was I successful in doing anything? <laughs> yeah. Did I, I accomplish yeah. anything? Because we can live a whole week and did not accomplish anything because there's nothing on paper. There's no planning. There's no nothing. So 
I, I want to know what I accomplished this week. And, and that's our lives. A lot of times we get caught up in it because we're caught up in everybody else's life or their life is so attached to us until, but we do have our own life and we do have our own uh, assignments. I'll say it like that. So I yeah. need to know that I am working on my assignments and that keep my stress level low. See, my stress level used to be here because there was no planning and there was no prioritizing. And definitely I wasn't doing what Paul said, let a man examine himself. Yeah, I wasn't doing that. Yeah. And we were created to walk from a place of peace, you know, and, and if we can't, and I like to say peace is real estate. Peace is, is a person and a place and his name is Jesus and he lives in Holy Spirit in us. And, and if we can, if we, are trying to do life and trying to do all this stuff that we fill our time with from a place outside of that peace. Hmm. We're not, we're not doing what we are created to do. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Mm -hmm. I came that you might have joy and have it abundantly. So I get up in the morning and I'm like, okay, where's my peace and where's my joy? Cause it's so much more fun. I am so much more fun to be around when I am standing in my peace and joy place. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and you have to create that peace though, because uh, if you don't, it's easy for people to take your time. You know that, right? It's mm -hmm. easy for people to say, hey, let's do this. So let's run it. It's easy. And it's easy for you to evaporate and suck up your own time doing nothing. Yeah. Well, and you know that as as senior pastor of a, of a church, um, you know, it's um, it's it, I think it's just boundaries. It's it's boundaries. It's knowing the call on your life. It's listening to Holy Spirit. To if he's saying yes, do this or not today, because you know when you look in the Bible, there's no formula except Jesus said, "I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say." That's our formula. So if I know that um, I'm to love God with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength, heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Those are my two first job descriptions. Then I know that I'm an encourager. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm called to bring out the best in other people to, to bring you on my show. Now I have, um, I have a job description for my life, so to speak. I'm also a wife. I'm a mom, a grandmom. I'm a stepmom, a step grandmom. <laughs> I'm a dog grandmom. <laughs> And all those things come in priority. But first commandment first is, is the, the top of the list. And then second, you know, we're, we're to take the gospel into all the kingdom. We're to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Then I get into who I am and how I fit into that and how I play into that. And, I'm and I know that you will agree with this. In every season of your life, that can look different. Yes. Oh, yes. It, it and, and even and even to understand who God is, and it, that takes discipline in your life. All it, it takes discipline because without discipline, without us focusing on that, because we won't get into the word. We'll make excuses about even when church was open, we'll make excuses. We won't read the word. We won't pray. We won't do the things. But when a situation come up, then we run to God. We want God to fix this and we want God to fix that. But if we went to him first, the situation we couldn't overtake us as it does you know, because we didn't have that discipline. We didn't yeah. prioritize what we should have at first because we should love him first. If we should, if we should love him first, love God first with all our heart, then why is he always number three on the list? <laughs> you know, and I really believe that if we start the day in either the logos word or the rhema word, then our spiritual antenna are up so that we know better how to respond in those circumstances you know, as those obstacles and stuff come in our way, it tunes us in. It tunes, don't you think it tunes us into Holy Spirit? 
Of so course it, has it does. It tells us and that when you when you begin to get the logo word, that's first because the rhema words can come through the day through the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. giving you your directions. But that logos word comes in the morning when you need to have that one on one with him. Yeah. And that should be first. Yeah. 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 And then I love how you say you, you reflect over the week, because if we can't look back at the few days prior and say, OK, what went well, what didn't go well and why yeah. didn't it go well? I mean, we really that what was the scripture you quoted um, that each man. No, I was uh, saying Paul said, let a man examine himself. Yes. Out of the first Corinthians 11. Yeah. Yes. And then let a man and really examine himself. that means what am I doing? that's working and what am I doing that's not working? In other words, where's right. the fruit? Yeah. Exactly. What am I doing? What have I accomplished this week? Because our time is, and, and one thing, one thing that God is in control of is our time. And that's yeah. why he tells yeah. us to redeem that time. So that means that all the years that we did not serve him, he was not first. Now that we say he first, we need to redeem that time and give that time to him, you know, and make sure that we got an order going on. That's why, you know, Annie, I turned 60 last year. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I, I got more time now uh, behind me, I believe, than I have in front of me. So the time that I'm here now, I need to make sure that I am doing what I need to do and, um, and operating in the, in the way that I need to be operating and providing the fruit that I need to provide for those, you know, because my thing now, I just want to keep pouring out into people, just pour out. Mm -hmm. I want to keep learning. I want to keep learning. I want to keep being taught, but I want to pour out as well. I want to pour out because we're in this season. We're in this season. I have 12 grandchildren. Wow. I have a lot to pour out. I have three children. You know, so therefore, even uh, I have preachers at the church, I mean, t uh, 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 members at the church just pour out so that they can go out and take, teach the gospel to other people. Because that's what it's all about. It's not about what we can do. It's not about yeah. us, period. It's yeah. all about yeah. what we're doing for Christ, because I think it's in Colossians 3. Only what we do for Christ is going to last anyway. Mm -hmm. Everything else, it just don't matter. It doesn't matter. And I love that because when we were in Israel a couple of years ago, my husband um, was so struck by the Dead Sea. And we had been up in Galilee. We'd been on the Sea of Galilee. We'd been in different spots in the Jordan River. And then we got down to the Dead Sea. And, you know, the Dead Sea is dead because everything flows into it and it doesn't flow out. And right. I believe that is such a powerful image of what you were just saying that that what we receive, what God is pouring into us needs to be poured out. Otherwise, yes. we end up like the Dead Sea. Dead. And you yeah, are just you are just doing that. I'm I'm just so impressed with with your life that that you it doesn't matter that we're 60. It it doesn't. What matters That's is that we're still here and whatever God is pouring into us, we need to be pouring out wherever That's he true. calls us to walk. Oh yes. Whatever I'm going to put follows. your um, Facebook thing up here um, because I okay. know that some of the people that follow me are going to want to be um, paying attention to some of the things that you're doing. Uh, and I just want to thank you. You are such a blessing. I'm so honored that you would come and have this conversation with me tonight. And I can tell um, my friend, Anna, uh, who I met in Israel, by the way, she's just enjoying this conversation and, um, <laughs> And I hope if you're listening to the replay that you'll still comment because um, we'll check back. I'll be checking in. Dr. Virginia will check back in. And, and we yes. just would love to encourage you if you're in a place where you're trying to step away from some self-medicating or if you have and you're in that funky between where you're trying to figure out how do I do this without continuing to make train wrecks. So please reach out to Dr. Virginia, leave some comments. Um, and uh, we would just, we would just love to hear from you. Yes. I Man, thank you, you for the opportunity. Pray? Would you pray just a nice benediction before we close? I will. I will. Lord, we just want to thank you tonight. First of all, we thank you for the woman of God that you used in the divine man of God years ago because you knew this day would come. So God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for Sister Say, Lord. I Thank that I ask that you continue to bless her, her husband, and her household. Lord, I thank you for her show. Lord, continue to bless and Lord, continue to let her 
uh, shed, uh, share this gospel with people everywhere all over the world in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for everything, God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Thank you for those that's watching. Thank you for those that'll be watching by replays. God, we pray that something was said, Father God, that you directed our, our, and our, directed our thoughts and something was said, God, that will fulfill the hearts of your men and your women. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.